Welcome to another monthly program of the Rhinebeck Historical Society. My name is Mike Frazier, one of the board members of the Historical Society, and I'm delighted to be able to have with us this evening someone who is a high school teacher in another life, but the life that we're familiar with is the time that she spends focusing on historical matters. She volunteers with us uh, at the Archives and Historical Society. She did a program recently on October 30th in Red Hook uh, <clears throat> for uh, Historic Red Hook, uh, part of their cemetery crawl talking about Anna Bishop. Uh, and <clears throat> she's also written a couple of books related to about uh, local history. Uh, one is actually, there are copies available upon one of the tables up there if anyone's interested later on after tonight's program. Uh, Stone by Stone is, is one of the books. Uh, the other one is Memories of Old Red Hook. And uh, she has also done a uh, program and is responsible for the... Pomeroy Foundation's sponsored sign that now calls attention to a very important aspect of history in our area, and that's the Shookville Memorial Church. Uh, Bonnie Wood did the research that allowed uh, that foundation to pay for a sign in that part of uh, our adjacent community. It's, it's in the town of Milan, I believe. Is that right? So uh, this evening, she's going to be talking about a very different topic. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about that topic. I'm going to let Bonnie Wood do that. Bonnie, we're delighted to have you here tonight. Thank you, Mike. Thank you everyone for coming out this evening. And we have a treat. This is a part of Women in Rhinebeck History. Uh, I started this program the beginning of the summer and it started with teaching the children of Rhinebeck. And I decided after that program, well, what about the adults? So here we are. Uh, and one addition, when I started to do that program, I happened to go to Morag. This is a little anecdote to start out with. Morag uh, introduced me to Jilda, and Jilda shared with me about Dorothy Knapp, who was not on this list to begin with, but Dorothy Knapp was on it by the time I presented it to the children. So I really appreciate that, uh, you know, that we met and uh, we, uh, we became involved to create this wonderful program. Um, to celebrate Dorothy Knapp, 1907 to 1986, who is one of uh, the women in Rhinebeck history. Dorothy Knapp, the queen of the cachet makers. And you see here, this is a cachet, and it's slightly blurry because it was taken, it is framed, and this is behind glass, and you'll be able to see this after the program over here in one of the frames. But I start with this because it really shows uh, the love that she has here for family, and it's a good way to start um, about Dorothy now. Now look at this carefully. We have the cachet, which of course in this case is the photo, and you have a stamp there, it's a love stamp, and then a love you mother stamp, and then the, the last one there is Whistler's mother, a famous painting. So whenever Dorothy Knapp put together a cachet. There was a lot of thought, a lot of love went into putting this together. And that she's really, if it is something personal, we have it one in one way, but then many of them are messages that are a little different. So we get to see quite a few sides of Dorothy Knapp tonight. So then let's actually look. These are the ones that are there. So this is quite controversial. And it was controversial because this postage stamp that uh, U.S. postage Whistler's mother in memory and in honor of the mothers of America uh, 
you see how the painting is and you see how it is cut off for this stamp, that was a controversy right at that time. And it was, uh, you know, people did not think that uh, that part of the painting should all be cut off. And it was such an important painting in American history. So that's where we start. Then uh, I wanted, this is actually near the end of her life, but I wanted to show you one of the, what I consider one of the greats, and these are the hand painted. I wanted to be sure you saw that at the beginning. And of course, this is Texas. And we have here uh, the Republic of Texas, 1836 is a stamp. We have the Alamo and you can see the vibrant colors. You see the arrangement of how she put everything in there and it tells a story. There's a lot in every one of these cachets. It's not just one little image. There's a lot. So you take a moment to actually look at everything that's there. And then one other key feature that you'll see in quite a few of them are the clouds. And you see how, because you have here the, where we need to address the envelope. And here though, you'll have that. So it's a good division and it works in many cases. And that way it kind of flows right, right across to everything that needs to be in the US. And these images are range from the first one there um, that we just spoke about. And this one are courtesy of Jill de Lyons and Jill de Marie Lyons that are here this evening uh, who shared these. And then there are many more that are from the Museum of Rhinebeck History. Okay, the residences. We'll start out with her personal life. Uh, for Dorothy Knapp, and we start out with, she was born in Kingston, New York in 1907. She grew up on Kip Avenue in Rutherford, New Jersey there. Uh, then she attended Skidmore and Saratoga Springs, and her first job as an art teacher was in Des Moines, Iowa. And then finally, she was had her next job in Port Chester, New York. So she is primarily in this part of the country, and we'll see where she ends up in just a moment uh, with just this one sojourn west. She was married at the Church of Messiah, December 15th, 1934, and this is uh, courtesy of the Museum of Rhinebeck History, this particular image. And here we get to where was she? She spent her life in Rhinebeck, right here in Rhinebeck. And the exciting part for, for me and for all of us at the Historical Society and all of you who are here who love history is that, and Rhinebeck history especially, is that she was right here in the historic district. And not just in one house, she was in three houses in the historic district. And they had some similarities. Why she moved, I don't know how that transpired, but all of them were in walking distance of each other and of where we are right now. And here, uh, this is the wedding announcement in the corner. And the wedding announcement says they will make their home, the new couple, Dorothy and her husband, Max, will, will make their home after January 1st, they were married in December, at 20 Chestnut Street in Rhinebeck. Very specific. Uh, and of course, nowadays we would never see such a specific, you know, for a marriage announcement in those days it did. And it's good for looking back in history. All right, and here in the historic district, uh, we have this uh, 20 Chestnut Street. This is in 1979. And we have the 2012 update. So it's fascinating to see what it is that, uh, that we can learn from, about these houses and also the fact that she was there living in these houses. And it says here that this is a relatively simple mid-19th century structure. And you'll see that that's very similar to the descriptions of the others. Then she moved very close 
for the first place at 72 Livingston Street in Rhinebeck. And here we have some images. These are uh, images from our website. And you can see all of these and more information about the historic district in Rhinebeck on our website. Uh, and here we have uh, 79 and 2012. And we can see these today. You could walk and uh, see these same houses today. And then once again, this is considered a modest mid-19th century single-family residence. The Cache Catalog of Stale and Nap is one of the resources that I used. And Jilda uh, did share this book and another book. And I did rely on these books for everything about Dorothy Nap. Except, of course, the you know, history for the houses. Okay, here we have... And I, and I like to do in the presentation, rather than just show you one, some of them are closely related to each other. So here we have messages home, World War II caches, and we can read these messages. Uh, and also, of course, look at the stamps that are there on the, uh, on the caches. Here we have Dear Mom, Don't Worry, We'll Do the Job, 1944. Enemy ears are listening. If you tell where he's going, he may never get there. And the first one said, win the war. That was a stamp that's up there. And then finally, don't talk about ship cargoes. Careless talk costs lives. And if you look carefully, you see how this image, you see here, this image and that image are the same, but they were printed in different colors, but the words are different. So the message is different. Airmail. U.S. Postal Service airmail, five cent stamps, and I started out with, some of these are five cents. We have 1947. And this one here is the first day of issue, and you see once again uh, the details that are there. It's not just a simple uh, plane or, or something else. It's, it's very detailed with the country. And you'll see here at the bottom left, it says Fleetwood. Most of these were Fleetwood, and I'll speak about that in a couple minutes. Uh, this one, of course, is the air letter. And this is beautiful. It seems simple, but if you look at it, uh, it's so detailed and has a lot of meaning behind it. And it says, anywhere in the world for you, for 10 cents. And then this one here, this one over here, that was in 1946, and we're back to the 5 cents airmail. Another one, Postal Service, special delivery. And... You might wonder, well, why am I showing you two that look the same? Do you see the difference? Does anyone see the difference when you look at them? That there are differences here. And one thing is, and this is a big difference here, this is the first day of issue. And you see that that's here, first day of issue. And you see over here is first day of issue. Uh, that was 19, uh, November 30th, 1951. This one that doesn't say it up there, it does say first day of issue over here, and that was in 1944. This is their both say Fleetwood. This one, Dorothy Knapp did not sign. This one is signed and still says Fleetwood. The stamp, of course, the first day of issue stamp, of course, would be different. And the one at the top has special delivery. And you can see the transportation, the mode of transportation there, and how it differs from down at the bottom. And of course, the second stamp, the smaller stamp, is different in both cases as well, which it would be for the different years. And the top one is that win the war, which these, uh, many of these are in World War II. So this is what we're dated. Okay, and then uh, one that's very important for all of us, another Fleetwood, is our Bill of Rights with the freedom of speech, the freedom of press, the freedom of religion, and the freedom of assembly with Dorothy Knapp's signature here, the four freedoms. That's what we are fighting for, Fleetwood.
in another message for World War II. And also, we have another message here by defense, savings bonds and stamps. FDR. So FDR, according to the FDR library, when FDR passed, he had 1,200,000 stamps in his collection. He was a stamp collector since he was a boy. Since he was a very young boy, he was a stamp collector. And as he became more famous and was the president, people would send him gifts of stamps. He was involved in all of these messages, especially for World War II. And especially he's right here. So certainly that communication, there's no indication that says that Dorothy Knapp sat down with FDR. However, there is uh, an indication that anything that she did, so any of the slogans would have had to have been approved by FDR, especially these regarding the war. Okay, another one where you have two that look the same, um, but slightly different, and you have these different stamps. This one has the Texas stamp, and then this one here has the U.S. Coast Guard. So these angels of mercy in the American Red Cross. Air power. Just a couple colors here. But you can see, I'm sure you can see all the way in the back, you can see how powerful that message is in that graphic. The air power, the Avenger in war, and a trailblazer in peace. And here we have air mail in the state, in the first stage. 75th anniversary, I tried to do some of the transportation. There's a lot, she has a lot here in this collection from the Museum of Rhinebeck History from World War II, but I tried to put in some transportation as well. In addition to that, associated just with the war, and this is for the first transcontinental railroad. Uh, another one that's uh, so detailed, and you can see that the, you know, the trains are here, here. We have the side views here. We have the clouds, the flags. There's so much, so much time, so much consideration that she puts into creating these designs, and she doesn't overdo it. It's not that it's overdone. It just seems like. It's there and it tells a story. And it just brings these ideas alive to all of us. The golden spike that unites the sinews of the war. And then another transportation. And here, of course, um, is a savannah, the lifeline of a nation. In peace, as in war, a similar type of message still in World War II during the time period. Uh, the first day of issue, and we have... The stamp is the first steamship to cross the Atlantic. Now, the, her cachets are based on the stamp that's there. But sometimes you see that she's not doing the cachet at that time when the stamp came out. So then she's selecting what she's going to do. Uh, but these, of course, this is the first day of issue, and this is very closely related. The cachet is very closely related to that original stamp. And now we get back to, this is 60 South Street and her residence in 1969. I do not know when she moved there, but I know that in 69, based on the census and um, based on other records, that she was there in, on South Street and she lived the rest of her life on South Street. And here we have this beautiful image of South Street, uh, the 2012 update, and you see some of the changes here through the years. Once again, in the Rhinebeck Historic District, Rhinebeck Village Historic District. And once again, a modest late 19th century 
worker. This one says worker type dwelling, which conforms in size and scale to its surrounding architecture on South Street. One of a series of five worker houses in this area. So my immediate belief was that, well, maybe she's starting at one and they're getting to be maybe a little more opulent. There was something better about the next ones. I'm not sure. They're described here about the same. Uh, they seem to be very similar in style when you look at the images, but I'm sure there must have been, there must have been a reason to move from one property to the other right here in the village. Of course, one thing would have been a love for the village, right? She wasn't moving away from the village. Uh, and then, of course, there are the statehoods. And these are fun, uh, and there's a lot here for the story. The story of Florida. How much can you possibly put uh, in one cachet? You've got Florida, the seal of the state of Florida, in God we trust, 100th anniversary, statehood, you have the shape of the state of Florida, you have the state flower, the orange blossom, you have Ponce de Leon with the fountain of youth, and you have him here, you can even make out, you know, it's very detailed, that you would see in the history books, and um, really focusing here on the fountain of youth, and the orange blossom there, and her name, the WMF, she signed in Fleetwood. Now, I'm going to step back a little and uh, say, well, what is a cachet? So we've been talking about these cachets, and we're looking at it. But just to mention it, uh, cachet refers to the design or the inscription added as a decoration to an envelope or cover, a piece of postal stationery or a postal card. The cachet design may be printed, and you're going to see some of those over here. You'll see some here. Some are going to be painted, and some are going to be drawn. Or it may be a label or a marking made by a rubber stamp. You're also going to see some of those over there. So I wanted to be sure to share um, how this is described. And then also you're going to see that some are add-ons that she did after the fact that someone might request from her that to add a cachet after that first stamp issue had been had come out. Okay, there is a whole collection of these over here, and these were to celebrate those countries that supported these efforts in World War II. The Viking spirit will not submit to the oppressor. Salute to Norway. And then, here is another one. So what's the difference between these two? These two are over here in the collection, and you will notice what the difference is. So I'm going to go back to the first one, and then see if you can notice a difference. Does anyone see a difference? Here's the first one, and then there's the second. This one is actually a reproduction, and there was a whole set of these reproductions that were made, and then the set is there. And when you actually look at them, you can tell that they're reproductions, but that's interesting that, you know, we call them reproductions, it's an actual size reproduction of the rare first day cover. And it says on it, for philatelic purposes, and that's on the back, so you won't see the back. I didn't take the, uh, put that in here, but on the back of what you'll have to see over here, it says uh, reproduction of a rare first day cover for philatelic purposes. Family unity. Here we have Maxwell Knapp passed. He passed, they were still living on 60 South Street. Talks a little bit about him, and I wanted to mention a couple things about Maxwell because Maxwell, he collected stamps. She married Maxwell, and he was the one who got her started 
with this. He was the one who, with his uh, being a philatelist, in collecting these stamps and first aid covers, he sent a sample of his wife's work, art, to Fleetwood. And Fleetwood loved it. And that was the beginning of what, of what she was doing. And of course, her career was teacher in Rhinebeck. That was her career. She taught in Rhinebeck for her whole career until she retired. Yet, her other side, the other part of Dorothy is this. So Maxwell got her started on it and she never stopped. So he passed in uh, 1969 and she continued with these caches throughout. And I did want to mention one thing uh, that her son Wally wrote because it really goes with this particular one that is so special, the Family Unity one. And in the Family Unity, the colors are a little different than many of them. You can see the paint, you can see the clouds here. It is so special. And of course, you see who it's addressed to on here, right? Which is very, very special. And over there in the corner, you see it's the kids, you know, the first day of issue, and it has kids. And uh, so it's, it's so special here. But he wrote, Son Wally wrote, in the beginning of the book, that's an aqua color over there that's on display. Uh, he wrote, I was extraordinarily lucky to have Dorothy Knapp as my mother. I would like to quote a poem I wrote and published about her. And her son Wally wrote, the memory turns back, a romp through morning meadows dew, a seed of spirit that would always be, so naturally. I thought of you, who held my hand and taught me to be free. It was so special, uh, that relationship between uh, Dorothy and Maxwell, and their only child, who was Wally. Wally passed just a couple of years ago. Uh, but he did uh, write the introduction to the book there, and he had input into that special book uh, that was written about Dorothy. This was near the end of her life. This was in 1986, and this one is addressed to Wally. And you see that Wally was living in Houston, Texas. And when you look over here, you'll see some of these that are Texas. So you see that connection, why she might be doing more of that. And uh, it's wonderful to see the hand painted, the vibrant colors. I don't know. I'm thinking that possibly Wally liked fish because she chose this one. And uh, it certainly would be nice, and it has CW now, and it has the Rhinebeck, New York. She doesn't always have the Rhinebeck, New York. Uh, this one, you know, has it. So, so it's such a special one, so meaningful. Uh, and then uh, she, Dorothy Wallace Apt Knapp, was born June 1907. She died the 28th of August in 1986 in Rhinebeck, Maxwell. And Dorothy are buried in the Rhinebeck Cemetery. Uh, you can, it's right around the corner here. It's, it's so close and uh, spent most of their lives right here in the village. And I put this one here simply because this one here and this one, she's addressing it to herself and it seems uh, to be a special tribute, one that would be good uh, to have with this is her obituary. 20 years she taught in the Rhinebeck Central Schools. Uh, now I have a special thank you to Jilda Lyons. Jilda Lyons and Jilda Marie Lyons. Uh, Rick Stickle from the Museum of Rhinebeck History and all of us at Rhinebeck Historical Society. Thank you so much for your support. And I had to leave with this message. I found this is one of the most uh, precious ones in the collection. And there's so much here. You might think, well, it's just a buy. But no, you've got the happy traveling. You have various modes of transportation. You have the family. I mean, this looks like quite, a, uh, you know, quite an adventure. It's 
more than just going off on a trip. They're having an adventure. And then, of course, it has Bernie, Gilda, Gilda Marie, 56 South Street, and Rhinebeck, the neighbors. Uh, they were very special. And then the stamps that are there, chosen specifically. American Automobile Association, 50th anniversary, National Park Centennial, and the giant sequoia. So we can only think where the family was going to see these giant, maybe they're going to see the giant sequoia and some national parks. So it's, a, it's such a beautiful, beautiful way to end. So happy traveling to everyone. And thank you all for coming. is right here. So I hope that you all will come over and view, actually view the caches. There are over 50 from the Museum of Rhinebeck History and uh, also from Gilda and Gilda Marie. And we have here, you can see the frame ones that they brought here. Oh, so special. And the ones over here as well. And we have the books here that Gilda Gilda um, let us have for this presentation tonight. And then this table here has a little bit about me and some of the recent things that I've been doing and certainly have my uh, my business card there as well. So thank you. Thank you. So come on over and enjoy. And don't forget the art over there. If you have any desire to make a cache, you've got the supplies. <laughs>